Hi everyone, this is Peter Skull with Music is a Journey. Today I'm jumping on a thread that was started by one Rob Walker. I actually am not familiar with Rob Walker's channel, however I will check it out. And um, I saw other people were doing this topic. At first I thought I'm not going to get onto it because I just had other videos that I really wanted to work on more and, you know, um, my scheduling time for videos is kind of limited, so I thought I just don't have time to do this one. But I saw at least four, maybe five other people give their responses on this thread, and I became very intrigued. So I decided I would do it myself. Uh, this is a video about album artwork. We are looking for 10 albums, show 10 albums with illustrated artwork, so no photographic images. So at first I, I watched a couple of videos during a break at work and I started thinking, okay, what albums would I want to talk about? What artwork, what artists would I want to talk about? And I made a preliminary list of 10. And then later on when I started researching who the artist was and some of the other works they've done, I realized that one artist actually had done four or five of the albums in my collection and two of them were ones I had picked to talk about. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to show one album. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what's going on in the cover and I will tell you who the artist is. And then I just want to show you some of the other things that this artist has done. So I'm not going to talk about the music so much on these albums. I'm going to focus on the artwork and the artist. So let's get started. So first of all, you see me wearing my Unleash the Archers shirt for the album Abyss. So that album is right here behind me. Here is the album cover. I am going to show, I'm going to disappear and I'm going to put the whole album artwork up here as I tell you about what's going on in the picture. Okay, so first of all, the artwork is done by Adam Burke. And this artwork here features, you can see in the center, there is a female character coming down. And behind her are four wraith-like figures. Now, this is part of the story. This is actually in a song called The Wind That Shapes the Land. This is a, a concept narrative album. It's actually part two in a duology. And this is the scene in that song where this female character, she's known as the matriarch. She is like an all-powerful figure in the galaxy uh, and she is coming down to face off with this large muscular figure in the foreground here who is the immortal. The immortal can, uh, he, he rests in a mountain called Apex and he can be called upon to go out and perform incredible feats of battle. And the matriarch called on him previously and now she's coming to face off against him. And what's happened is in the background, these four wraith-like figures are actually her four sons. And her four sons were really, if I recall, they were lackadaisical. They didn't show a lot of motivation when she called on them to do her bidding. So she killed them all, but kept their souls bound to her. So these are the four souls of the sons. Now, one of the sons had a son who misunderstood he thought the immortal had killed his father and so he wanted to seek out the immortal to get his revenge and try to kill the immortal himself however he learned that it was his grandmother who killed his father and so he sought out the immortal instead to ally with him and hopefully use him um, to get rid of the matriarch so in this scene here the the son the the grandson and the immortal have fled from the matriarch and they have arrived on this planet with uh, the remains of an ancient civilization and now they face off the matriarch as she catches up to them and this is the scene where the immortal and the matriarch do battle and eventually of course uh, the immortal vanquishes the matriarch however not without sacrifice um, the son, grandson, who became his, his friend, has been mortally wounded and in the next track after this speaks his final words to the immortal. Anyway, that is the scene that's going on in this picture here on the album cover. So the artwork is by Adam Burke and we're going to just take a look at a couple of other illustrations here. Adam Burke has done, actually I was quite surprised to do, he did the artwork for uh, an album by Bellwitch. This was actually a I think it was uh, a double CD of just one song and four vinyl, was it? Or was it two vinyl, four sides? I forget now, but uh, one long song. Anyway, Adam Burke did the artwork for that. And I also found on a, there was um, 
a blog site dedicated to uh, doom metal and uh, stoner metal, stoner rock, and apparently Adam Burke has done a lot of artwork for that kind of music. So these are some of the other illustrations he has done, which I just pulled off that, that website. Uh, incidentally, Unleash the Archers are more of a power metal type band, or at least they are on this album here, in case you're interested. They won the Juno Award for Best Album in Metal and Hard Rock in 2021. So our next album cover is by the English prog rock band Magenta. This is the 27 Club. And this artwork was done by Bjorn Gosses, perhaps uh, if I got it right. So Bjorn does a mixture of, basically he sometimes takes original photos and works them into digital creations. Or sometimes he simply starts from scratch. So he has also done various artworks for different albums. He did another one for Magenta called The White Witch. You can see it here. And now I want to talk about what's going on on this album cover. So we can see some kind of like mad scientist character. But there are six figures here, each holding shattered mirrors in front of their faces. And if you know the 27 Club, it is that uh, so-called club, famous people who have died at the age of 27. And there are quite a few of them. And pictured here on the cover are six of them holding mirrors in front of their faces. And there is a track on this album dedicated to each of the six characters. So let's see here, we have the Lizard King, which is of course Jim Morrison. We have Ladyland Blues, which is for Jimi Hendrix. We have Pearl, of course, Janis Joplin. We have Stoned, that is for Brian Jones of the Rolling Stones. We have The Gift, that is for Kurt Cobain. And The Devil at the cross Crossroads for uh, Robert Johnson. And if you look on the cover, there are different things. Here, I'll show the picture large again. There are different things placed, different objects placed in front of the different characters. You can see Kurt Cobain's character has a shotgun in front of him. Uh, Jim Morrison has a bottle of whiskey. Janis Joplin also has some things in front of her. So uh, suggesting, uh, anyway, how these people died or alluding to how these people died at the age of 27. Okay, so that is again Bjorn Gosses, I think. Gosses, Gosses, anyway. So that is uh, second one. So third one, this is the cover work. I think this was the Tangents debut album. The artwork is done by Ed Uniski. Uniski, uh, maybe Uniski. Um, I've seen his name spelled in Russian lettering, so perhaps he's Russian or, anyway of that kind of language background. Um, it's maybe hard to see, so once again, let's take a look at the larger image here. And Ed Uniski actually has done five album covers for The Tangent, so I'll just show you two more here so you can see. As well, he has done album artwork for The Flower Kings, Guy Manning, I actually have this one, uh, Unitopia, which is an Australian progressive rock band, I, a symphonic prog band. I have that album as well. And he's done artwork for several others too. So Ed Uniski is uh, kind of a big artist name in the prog rock world. He does a lot of album covers for other bands as well. I think, um, yeah, there's a pretty long list of album covers that he has done. Right, so here was actually one of the very first ones I thought about. This is Mason. This is an Australian thrash metal band. I actually saw them live. Back in, I think it was 2019, they opened for Ginger and Obscura. I actually got to meet the band as well. Uh, first, during a break in the show, I met them at the merch table and then got to chat with the vocalist a little bit later on after the show. So I was really intrigued by the artwork here. And this is done by someone named Eleran Cantor. And Eleran Cantor's list on Wikipedia of album artworks is pretty darn extensive. And in fact, there were several that I knew and originally I had planned to show two different artworks of albums which turned out to be both done by the same artist. So I'm going to pick this album cover to show here. Let me show you the larger image so you can see how it is. And some of the other artworks that he has done. Let's see, he has done lots of metal covers. He's done Archspire, the two albums by Archspire which I have. He has done artwork for Black Wizard, which is a band right out of New Westminster, right across the river from where I grew up, which I also have this one. 
he has done the artwork for Psy, and this actually was the artwork I wanted to show, the second album by the same artist I wanted to show. And here's another one by Psy, which I, I've always wanted to get because of the artwork, actually. Uh, and it turns out it's the same artist. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, actually, let's go back to this other one here by Psy. I want to show some of the interesting points in this picture because you can see in the background there are some different papers on the wall and then way over in the background here there is this shadow on the wall. So uh, this is kind of interesting because uh, you can also see broken glass on the floor. So there's some impression that there's been some violence or, you know, some evil uh, happenings going on in this house, but here is this beautiful woman watering her dead plants cheerfully as she looks out on upon a sunny day. So I, I really like that album cover, which is why it was also one I wanted to show. Uh, moving on, we also have Despised Icon. This is, I think it's a um, deathcore or metalcore band from Montreal. I'm interested in getting this album. And of course, a couple here by Testament, which are both albums I have considered getting. I just haven't got yet. So. Yeah, all of this by Eloran Cantor. So yeah, my pick anyway, Mason's Impervious album here. So the next album artwork, this is for Wobbler's second album, Afterglow. Uh, let's take a look at the large image here. And Afterglow was actually painted by Lars Frederick uh, Freusli, which is the keyboard player for both Wobbler and for White Willow. I didn't know that he was a painter and I couldn't really find a lot of other examples of his work. So I think he mostly concentrates on his keyboard work. However, there were a couple of other examples of his paintings elsewhere, but other Wobbler albums have been done by other artists. So I really like this one here because there's a kind of um, surrealistic Dali, Max Ernst type feel to it. So I, I, I was actually going to choose a different Wobbler album cover, but I've talked about that album already two or three times, so I thought I'd show something a little different. And, you know, kind of coincidentally, that artwork was produced by one of the members. Next up, I want to show, this is the um, album, this is the, the CD, <laughs> this is the album artwork for Yoshu Fukushu by Maximum the Hormone, a Japanese band that mixes new metal, uh, metalcore, grindcore, uh, and uh, punk, hardcore punk, various styles into their music. Um, this CD actually is quite fantastic because it actually comes as an illustrated comic book. Uh, well, there, there's, yeah, lots of stuff inside here. Also, there's one of their, their, their chief illustrators. Oh, actually, okay, so here's actually a detailed picture. Um, and what it shows is the um, students, young female students who are, oh, not that, <laughs> who are in school. Well, okay, so that's what the cover shows. It's just lots and lots of different girls all writing the same words over and over again. However, uh, here's the larger image. If we zoom in to one particular desk, we see this character sitting here, which I think is pretty cool. Um, the back artwork is actually, yeah, I'll cover that one up, done by their regular artist who is actually worthy of speaking about on his own. I think his name is Manga Taro. Um, he's, his work is, <laughs> it's unique. Usually lots of snot and drool and uh, flopping old ladies' tits and so on like that. But the, I picked this one here because I just thought it was so interesting. And the fact that the CD actually comes uh, inside a, a, a book and comic with lots of illustrations. I thought that was pretty cool. So that artist, again, is Shohei. Oh, let me show a couple of his other works so you can see. Um, there was some website, I, I think he was doing some collaboration with some company or they were featuring his uh, exhibition somewhere. So uh, very interesting artwork by Shohei. Next up, I want to feature the artwork or talk about the artwork of another Japanese artist. This is Okoshi Kotaro. This is his artwork here for the cover of Ningen Isu's Kaijin Nijimenso album. Kaijin Nijimenso was actually a short novel written by Edogawa Rampo, a Japanese mystery and suspense writer from, I guess, like 1920s, 1930s. Uh, the name Ningen Isu of the band is actually based on one, uh, is taken from the title of one of his stories. This was a story, it, it translates as The Fiend of Twenty Faces. And this is the uh, famous detective in the story who is uh, here pictured as um, Wajima Shinji, the guitarist and lead vocalist. The, the fiend is um, Suzuki Kenji, Kenji Suzuki. 
whichever way you want to say it, uh, who is the bass player and also a lead vocalist. And then um, Goto Masahiro is the drummer. He was the drummer for five or six of their albums, and he's pictured as the kind of young, uh, uh, maybe a assistant or companion to the detective. Onkoshi Kotaro has done illustrations for various book covers, uh, as well as um, actual the illustrations inside books as well. So he's quite a, a well-known artist, and he also did the cover artwork for Ningen Isu's Ogo Nyoake album, their third album from 1992. Okay, so that's Okoshi Kodaro and his uh, his artwork here for the Ningen Isu album. Next is an album I think that's going to be a little more familiar to a lot of people. This is Big Brother and the Holding Company's Cheap Thrills album and the artwork here done by Robert Crumb, often just going by the name of R. Crumb. And the artwork on this is really interesting because this pictures each of the band members as well as a picture for each of the song titles. So let's take a look at the larger image again. We of course have Janis Joplin, um, and honestly I've forgotten the name of the other members right now, but they are, are pictured around here. And you can see like a um, combination of the two, I Need a Man to Love, Summertime, all sorts of different illustrations for uh, each of the song titles. Robert Crumb uh, has, of course, this unique style of artwork. So I want to show here a couple of other his a uh, couple of his other illustrations. There is actually a small eatery type place that I pass by on my way home, and I always see it at night, so it's always closed at the time. But they have a really large square poster of that album cover in there and I've often wanted to go in just to take a look and maybe speak with the proprietor to see if he likes Big Brother and the Holding Company. Okay, moving on, the next one. This is the album cover for Opulent Decay by Spell and this you may recognize as a painting done by Max Ernst. Max Ernst. Actually, this painting has been used on other album covers I found, like different classical works or opera works, I think. Um, when I was searching around on the internet, it also is featured here on the cover of this book, as you can see. And of course, Max Ernst is one of the big surrealistic painters, along with Salvador Dali. Here is a painting of Max Ernst called The Angel of Home or The Triumph of Surrealism. And I am pretty sure I have seen this as an album cover somewhere, maybe from a band in the 80s. However, I could not think of who it was. I was typing in, is it Depeche Mode? Is it Joy Division? I really could couldn't think of who it was. I think it's some English band. I might be completely mistaken. It might be something totally different. And another one famous of his is The Temptation of Saint Anthony. So I really like surrealistic painting because I find it so imaginative. I always enjoyed the works of Salvador Dali and I've had a chance to look a little bit more into the works of Max Ernst. I've always really enjoyed this artwork and it's really cool. Uh, Spell used it for the cover of their third album. So the last one I want to talk about, this is the album cover for Gun's debut album. They're sometimes called The Gun, but I think it's just Gun, that's all it says here. This was their debut album, looks like it's self-titled, this is from 1968. This is a, a trio. I find the music on this album is very similar in a way to Cream's Wheels of Fire. But of course this is the actual very first album uh, to feature artwork by Roger Dean, who of course went on to become famous for doing artwork for Yes and Uriah Heep and lots of other bands. Um, but yeah, this was his very first album artwork. Larger image here for you to see. Okay, that's my contribution to Rob Walker's thread on 10 album covers of illustrated artwork. There we go. I'll be back with another video probably fairly soon because I've got one I want to do this weekend. So thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye.